So what really went on behind that mistaken Israeli airstrike of those eight vehicles of the World Central Kitchen, WCK? Well, I've been studying the details. Jerusalem Post, the IDF's analysis. It looks like it was a very clever trap by Hamas. It's like something out of a movie. It was Monday, April 1st, 10 p.m. A convoy of three WCK vehicles starts driving southwards. And an IDF drone unit observes some serious uh, inconsistencies. 10.20 p.m., a guy jumps on the roof of the vehicles and starts shooting into the air. It's a way of sending a signal to other fighters, or maybe to draw the attention of the IDF, maybe causing them to strike. But they held off. But why was this gunman on an aid vehicle? They were then joined by a convoy of other vehicles. They drove for about 20 minutes and then split up. Part of the convoy went into one hangar and a single vehicle, this is interesting, went in another direction into a different hangar about 20 minutes later. Now, the acts of splitting up the convoy and going into different hangars would have made it hard to see who had gone in and who had come out. Something else that increased the complexity was that the convoy was including or was using Toyota pickup trucks, which are usually a characteristic of Hamas, white pickups, Corollas. They were not typically used by the aid workers. And the markings of, on the aid vehicles were not visible at night. The IDF drone unit refrained from attacking the aid trucks, although they had positively identified Hamas terrorists, at least on the first truck. They suspected more than the others. They tried to call the aid workers. They couldn't get through to them. The IDF called the WCK headquarters, and they tried to call the aid workers, but they still didn't, they still didn't answer. Now, when the vehicles left the hangar, the IDF drone unit believed they were not the same vehicles, they were, that they were Hamas vehicles, or that Hamas operatives had taken over the convoy. Anyway, something was clearly going down. First of all, the gunmen who fired into the air, come on. And who was in those other vehicles that joined the convoy? And why did they join the convoy? Why did the convoy split up and go into separate hangars? Why were they using white Corolla pickup trucks? typical of Hamas. Why did none of the aid workers answer their phones when they were called both by the IDF and by their employer? Well, the reason, I think, is that Hamas had them at gunpoint. It looks like the kind of thing drug dealers do to confuse the cops. I think the Hamas fighters hijacked the convoy, threatened the aid workers to stay silent and follow their instructions, and fired into the air to make sure the IDF was watching. Then they made it look like a terrorist operation was going down. The lone vehicle that split from the convoy and drove in the opposite direction, I think that was the Hamas fighters getting away from the scene. They knew the trap was set and the IDF would probably strike the other vehicles. This would bring a ton of condemnation down on Israel and maybe even pressure them to stop going after Hamas. Seven aid workers were killed. Innocent people from different countries who just wanted to help people in need. I think they didn't understand the reality of Gaza, how cunning and ruthless Hamas can be. Israel took full responsibility and an investigation was immediately conducted. Two IDF officers were fired and both the government and the military made a profuse and heartfelt apology and stated that they value the work of World Central Kitchen. Now, the CEO of WCK accused Israel of intentionally targeting the vehicles, but that is ridiculous. Seriously, it's rubbish. It makes no sense for Israel to do that. It was probably a trap and Hamas fooled everybody, the aid workers, the IDF, a lot of people around the world. People are just too naive to understand how devious and ruthless Hamas really is. Remember, 20 years ago, they perfected the suicide bomber. They engineer collateral damage as a propaganda tool. They've got no problem sacrificing their own people. You think they'd hesitate to sacrifice foreigners? And a quick word about the condemnation that's been directed at Israel for this. When the US was at war in Afghanistan, 2008, they accidentally struck a wedding party. 47 civilians were killed, including the bride. Four months later, believe it or not, another strike at a wedding, 37 civilians killed. 2021, drone strike, Kabul, 10 people killed, an aid worker and some children. I could go on. Look, I can accept criticism, but I don't accept hypocrisy. Anyway, what's obvious is that Hamas wants this war and they're playing it like a game of chess. Israel doesn't want it. And it's not good for the country. But Hamas can end it at any time if they release the hostages and surrender. And the sooner they do that, the better for everyone. Thank you for watching. I take complex concepts and make them easy to understand and easy to share in short, concise videos. If you value my content, please consider supporting my channel at patreon.com slash Official. 
Your support helps me continue creating content to counter all the misinformation, and make sure that the truth is heard. And that's vital for creating a peaceful and prosperous Middle East for everyone.